What's up, Fight Fans? Welcome to Triple THS, brought to you by Countermove Fancy MMA at Countermove.com. I'm the Dumb and Dumber prequel of mixed martial arts, Tommy Toehold. Today, my UFC 180 Countermove picks. Let's do this shit! <laughs> Holy fucking shit, Fight Fans, pride never died. Do we have a fucking main event this Saturday? Two legends of the sport are gonna throw down in Mexico for our entertainment, and there will be blood. Mark Hunt is the real-life Terminator for Brice Overdoom could sub a fucking grizzly bear. That fight kicks the dick in of any fight ever. It might end up being the best heavyweight fight that's ever happened. And some interim gold is on the line just to spice things up a bit. I mean, holy fucking shit, that fight alone is worth this card. Yet in Ricardo Lamas and Dennis Bermudez, Jake Ellenberger versus Kelvin Gastelum, Jessica I and Leslie Smith. It's the UFC's first card in Mexico. There's two tough finales. What the fuck more could you possibly want? Oh, you want to be more personally invested in the card? You want a chance to win some money? You want the experience of fantasy football and MMA but in a single night? Well, punch my dick and call me Daffy Duck. You can have all that playing fantasy MMA at countermove.com. And I'll do you one better. Not only will I explain to you how countermove fantasy MMA works, I'm gonna go through this entire card and let you know who's gonna be best for your team. Let's do this shit. The first thing you're gonna want to do in doing this shit is jump on your favorite web browser and head to countermove.com. Once you get there, you're gonna see professional hot person and Hermes reincarnated in the form of Natasha Wicks. Under Natasha, you'll notice that there's all sorts of games. Big games, little games, free games. Whatever sort of game strikes your fucking fancy, Countermove has that type of game. The only one I'm interested in, though, is the big money tourney. The one that literally has my name written all over it. 25 bucks gets you in, the winner's walking home with 2,000 fucking dollars, and the top 100 payout. It doesn't get much more awesome than that. So once you've picked your game, you're gonna be brought to the team selection page. This is where the winners and the losers are made. You're gonna pick a team of five fighters using 25,000 per 10 dollars. Your fighters perform, you rack up points, you win. It's that fucking easy. Now notice that I said points, fight fans. This ain't Vegas. We're not doing straight picks. This is fantasy sports just like fantasy football. The only difference being our league lasts one night and you don't have to go to a stupid fucking draft party. The name of the game is finishes and fast. Your fighter knocks the other fighter's face off in 10 seconds. You're gonna score a shit ton of points. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the matchup Saturday night and decide who it is that's gonna take some faces off. First up, we have Marlon Barra taking on Marco Beltran. Both guys participated in tough Latin America and are making their debuts. Vera has a high finish rate with most of his wins coming via sub. Beltran has a 100% finish rate, but before coming to the house, he had three losses in a row, two via sub. Vera sounds like a solid pick here for the submission win, but these are two unproven fighters as of yet, so it's better to avoid this one for something safer on the card. Next, we have Guido Canetti versus Enrique Briones. Also a couple guys from Tough LA. Canetti has a 100% finish rate with just as many subs as KOs. His only loss comes via submission. Briones has been around the block with 19 pro fights. He has a high finish rate, mostly via KO. He's lost three decisions and been subbed once. For an even money fight, Briones has a shit ton more experience and a lot of finishes. I would go with Briones if I was to pick on this one. After that, we have Yair Rodriguez taking on Leonardo Morales. This is the tough LA featherweight finale. Rodriguez has a 66% finish rate, one sub and one knockout. His only loss is via TKO. In the house, he won two fights via sub to get to the finale. Morales is unbeaten in four fights going into the house, all finishes. He scored a KO and a decision to get to Saturday night. These guys don't have enough data to warrant a pick. I think Rodriguez takes it, but don't pick on this one unless you have to. Next up, Humberto Brown versus Gabriel Benitez. Two more guys from Tough LA. Brown was 4-4 four and four going into the house with a 75% finish rate, all subs. He's lost three times himself via submission. Benitez has 20 fights with 16 wins with 18 via sub. He has a really high finish rate. For even money, Benitez seems like a strong pick who is likely to get a finish. He is definitely going on my team. Now we jump to the co-main event. The juggernaut bitch takes on Kelvin Gastelum. Ellenberger has a ton of high-level experience. He's got 18 KOs and 5 subs in his 29 wins. He has a very high finish rate. He's coming off of two losses, but they were to Rory Mack and Robbie Lawler. Kelvin is a tough winner. He's unbeaten in nine fights. He has a 66% finish rate. However, three of his four UFC wins have come via decision. This is a match I don't foresee a finish happening on. 63% of Ellenberger's losses have come via decision. He's a crafty vet. He's going to be hard to put away. I think Gastelum wins this fight, but it goes the distance and he takes a solid decision. Next, we have Jessica I and Leslie Smith. I am so fucking psyched for this fight. I is coming off a loss to Alexis Davis via split decision. She's 10-2 and two with two fights in the UFC, but she does have a low finish rate at 30%. Smith is a Caesar Gracie fighter. She's 1-1 one one in the UFC, has fought just about everybody there is to fight and competitively. She has a 57% finish rate, all coming from KO. All five of her losses have come via decision. She is damn near impossible to put away. What does all this mean? It means we're in for a fucking slobber knocker to quote good old JR, but it also means that we're likely taking this one to a decision. This one might end up winning some awards at the end of the night, but I would avoid it in your counter 
counter move game. Next up, Chris Heatherly is taking on Augusto Montano. Chris has one fight in the UFC. He lost to Ben Saunders via holy fucking shit, I'm a Plata. He has a 63% finish rate, mostly via sub. Montano is making his UFC debut, but he has 14 fights under his belt with a single decision loss to Smiling Sam Alvey. He's got a 100% finish rate with five subs and eight knockouts. This dude is a killer by all accounts. It looks like Montano is worth the price here. If you can afford him, there is a high likelihood of a stop. After that, we have the Bantamweight Tough LA finale between Ali Alejandro Perez and Jose Quinones. Perez was 14 and five going into the house. He's got a lot of experience, a high finish rate, about 50-50 sub to knock out. He won a decision and scored a KO to make it to the finale. Quinones was three and one going into the house with two KO finishes and a decision win. His only loss came right before doing the show via TKO. He scored a KO and a unanimous decision to make it to the finale. Perez has more experience. He has a high finish rate, but there's not a lot of data on Jose, so it's really hard to make a pick here. If you're going to put somebody from this fight on your team, Perez seems like the safer pick, and at 4900 the price is right. Next, we got a pretty big one. Ricardo Lamas is taking on Dennis Bermudez. Both fighters have identical records, lots of high-level experience, and a 50% finish rate. Two of Lamas' three losses come via KO, the other via decision to Jose Aldo. He has a submission win over Cub Swanson, and he knocked out Eric Koch. Bermudez is on a seven-fight win streak in the UFC since losing his debut. He has three losses that come via sub, one to Diego Brandao. Four of his seven UFC wins come via decision in very close fights. He was able to sub Clay Guida. With only a 50% finish rate and even lower in the UFC, Bermudez is really pricey. Lamas is a steal at 4,200 with his experience. His only loss in the UFC comes from the best fighter of all fucking time. But again, both of these guys are 50-50 on finishes. If I was picking on this one, I would go with the value, and I think Lamas pulls off the upset. Moving on. Edgar Garcia versus Hector Urbina. Both guys are making their UFC debuts. They have a good amount of experience and a pretty high finish rate. Garcia has 50% of his wins via knockout, 36% coming from subs. Urbina is an American top team fighter. Garcia seems like a solid pick here. He has a lot of KOs, and Urbina has been knocked out five times. If you can afford him on your team, it seems like a solid pick for two guys just making their UFC debuts. And finally, we have the big one. The main event, the Fedor Killer taking on Hano. It's Fabricio Verdum and Mark Hunt for the interim title. How do you not love the fucking shit out of this fight? Both guys are legends in the sport. Both have a ton of experience. Both have a high finish rate. This fight is not going five rounds. Verdum is the submission master of the heavyweight world, no questions. He has nine of his 18 wins via sub, including a submission over fucking Fedor. And he's no slouch on his feet either with five stops and a dominant stand-up performance against Travis Brown. Mark Hunt is a mass murderer. He's a world destroyer. Massive power in both hands. Seven of his 10 career wins come via KO in devastating fashion. He has a chin made of admantium. He is going to be swinging for the fences from the time this fight starts until the time it ends. This one could very honestly go either way simply because both men are so dangerous. But if we look at their past performances, I think Verdum is the winner here. I love Mark Hunt. He's one of my all-time favorite fighters, and if he hits Verdum with one of those death blows, Verdum's going to sleep. But Verdum's stand-up game is smart. He's not going to allow himself to be put in those positions, and six of Hunt's eight losses have come via submission. There is no greater submission fighter in the heavyweight division than Fabricio. Verdum wins via sub. He's a great pick if you can afford him. Either way, someone from this fight should be on your team. Once you've weighed your options, it's time to make your best team of five fighters using the 25000 fake dollars at your disposal. I'm going with Benitez, Montano, Verdum, Perez, and the upset pick in Lamas. You can pick whoever the fuck you want. Once you've got your team, hit the play now button, invite some friends. Come Saturday night, you can check out how you're doing against everyone else on the leaderboards. This is a fucking badass pay-per-view. There are a bunch of awesome fights, not to mention some hungry up-and-comers. You know you're going to get UFC 180, so why not make what's already going to be an awesome night even more fucking awesome? Hop into Countermove Fantasy MMA Game at countermove.com. Invite all your friends, your enemies, random people you don't know. Invite as many people as you want to defeat and gloat to after your team gets five stops in the first round. It just makes everything more fun. And since I'm a kind and merciful cartoon overlord, if you make a deposit from now to fight night using the promo code DIRTY30, you're gonna get 30% bonus on your deposit. So there has never been a better time for you to kick my ass in a counter move tourney. For everybody Triple THS, I'm Tommy Toehold. I will see you on the leaderboards. Somewhere between first and how in the fuck could you possibly score that low?